Villa over those of the courageous Spautone. <laughs> but there is someone among us, someone above us, someone who resembles us in the same way a diamond resembles a stone. An eagle resembles a butterfly. A star resembles the flame of a candle. Our Emperor Valentinian. We owe the peace of the kingdom to him, the prosperity of the fields, the good fortune of the heavens. To him, and not to a bishop who claims for himself the power is bestowed upon the emperor and only the emperor. To the emperor and not the bishop. He's referring to Ambrose. Bestowed by God to act as a mediator Clever between as the always, earth General. and the heavens. To, establish to act as a mediator between the earth and the heavens. To establish what is good and what is evil. To leave his people to salvation. Thus the emperor and not the bishop shall hear our prayers. Our petitions, our invocations. He is our faith, our comfort, our hope. The fields, houses, also the churches are his. If the emperor decides to requisition them, no one can oppose him, not even Bishop Ambrose. Because whoever isn't with us is against us. <laughs> Me, you, all of us, we belong to him. son's speech yesterday was quite successful. I'm so ashamed. It's not your fault. I should have been a better mother. Is there a better mother than God? And yet, how many of his children repudiate him? But don't lose hope. If Augustine had been an easy child, God wouldn't have given him a mother like yourself. Ah, here she is now. We were just talking about you, day. We didn't think you were coming. <laughs> you would say that. Oh. Haven't you already had one of those? That was ages ago. Adeodatus. Adeodatus. Adeo. Adeodatus. Where is he? Adeodatus. Oh, there, there. No, no, no. Come on. Hey. <laughs> Augustine, oh. I have great news. Come on. Guess what the Emperor has asked me. For a rocking horse? This is not the time for sarcasm. The Empress Mother has taken the words from your speech literally. She's asked us to requisition Ambrose's Basilica. You and I. Not Bautonio, one of the other officials. What did I tell you? We are becoming increasingly more influential. Great. But we still have to see if Ambrose will obey us. You are the Emperor's voice, and the Emperor is, remember your speech, right? The mediator between the Earth and the heavens? You convinced everyone of this. How could Ambrose possibly stand in opposition to one of the Emperor's orders? Hmm? Tonight we celebrate. Oh. Here's to us. By the way, the Manichaeans of Milan have asked me to invite you to one of their rites tomorrow night. I want nothing more to do with them. You've been a mannequin for years. What happened? 
Years of obscurity. I only needed to read Plotinus to realize that. Is he a Christian philosopher? No. <laughs> Just a great philosopher. Augustine, the Manichaeans are powerful. Your presence here today is in part due to them. Even if you don't want to be one of them anymore, pretend. Pretend? Pretend that Valentinian is a great emperor. That Bautoni is, is a soldier, that I am a Manichaean. We can pretend everything we want, Valerius, but not everything can be pretended. Tired of the party? I'm tired of this palace. Sometimes I just want to be alone. It's strange to think of someone like you alone. You think so? Where's your wife? <laughs> I'm not married. For a man of your position, that sounds strange to me. So what do you do when you get tired of this palace? I go away, at least for a while. Where to? A secret place. So don't say anything more then, or it will not be a secret anymore. I won't tell you where it is, just what it's like. It's a villa in the woods in front of a very special little lake. It's a natural spring-fed lake. And the water is hot. Always hot. Close your eyes. Imagine how it is in the winter. To take a dip at night. And snow all around you. I've never seen snow before. You should come. But it's your secret place. You're good with words. Maybe one day you'll convince me to reveal it to you. Augustine. Bishop. You made good use of my words in your diatribe against me in court. They've been useful to know you and Plotinus better. Good. But be aware that Plotinus offers us everything but the essential. That the truth is not an idea, a concept, or a state of mind, but is manifest in one divine person. We're here on behalf of Emperor Valentinian. Very well. And I'm here on behalf of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. <laughs> the Emperor demands that you surrender this basilica to the Aryan community. Demands? Demands. In the name of what authority? The authority bestowed upon him. By who? By God. Liars! How dare you? How dare you name God as your authority? You don't believe in him! You don't believe in anything! And you, worse, invoking the return of the pagan demons. Dogs on a leash, that's what you are! You wander around barking out lies, be silent! And look deep within yourselves for what the truth really is. Only the truth will turn you into men. Free men. We'll be forced to report your conduct to the Emperor. Tell them, if they want to get rid of me, they must attack me, not my people. Let's go. Augustine? Remember what I said. 
It's not the man that finds the truth, but the truth that finds the man. Because the truth is a person. It's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, what will we tell the Empress Mother to use force? To send Bertani and his soldiers to take Ambrose's Basilica. The people will not be pleased. They'll all side with Ambrose again. No. Because you, with your words, you will make the people pleased. And you will keep them all on our side. Everything is at stake here, Augustine. Are you with me? See how the mosaic is put together. Little by little, it appears. But only by the end, when every piece has found its place, will we be able to see the full picture. I'm leaving you in the best hands. <laughs> I'm sure you both have a lot to talk about. Look, Adiodatus, there's your father. Augustine, I'd like to invite you to my villa. I would be honored to come. Believe me, I know. You have a great future ahead of you. Soon your voice will be the most important in the whole court. That depends on various circumstances. That's right. On one in particular, that you still need to obtain a family rich enough to sustain your ambitions. A family like yours? And you must know that I also have a daughter. In two years' time, she'll be of marrying age. Uniting you in marriage would be a good solution for me as much as for you. That is, if you want your voice to be the most important in court. Wait. Remember the first time I took off your sandals? You've come a long way since then. We've both come a long way. And you have a long road still to travel? Yes. I was waiting for you with Adiodatus outside the Imperial Palace today. Really? I saw you walk out and was about to go over to you. But then an elegant man stopped you. I walked away. You walked away? Yes. Why? I didn't want to be a bother to you. I didn't want to get in your way. But I've never considered you a bother. I never want to be a bother to you. for you to grow up.
to her was torn and wounded till it bled, and she went back to Africa, vowing to thee never to know any other man, and leaving with me my natural son by her. <laughs> 